Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here, and in this video, I'm going to review the new Plastic Stormcrow Ryokan B and TC variant model from Brent Evans and Blaine Lee Pardo's US company, Creative Juggernaut. Before the review, let me say that I was not paid to create this video, but the models were sent to me with the specific intent to create an independent review of their pre-production models. The benefit to this is that I get to share that here with the Battletech community, as well as provide feedback to Brent and Blaine to help improve the overall quality of the eventual production models. With these being a pre-production proof, they were pulled from the very first mold, and there's already several issues still being worked on that you'll see throughout. The biggest of these are the casting lines and slipping. With this being Creative Juggernaut's first foray into US-based plastic miniature production, these are expected growing pains associated with learning the ropes. Now I need to manage some expectations with all of you. As a Battletech fan, it goes without saying that I know we'd all love having super high quality plastic mechs on par with those other larger established companies, but that's not going to be the case with these. Brent has stated that the overall goal for their variant miniatures is to get them to the level of quality that puts them at or above the quality of current Catalyst plastics. The Stormcrow is their test bed and jumping off point, and I couldn't be happier for that as I'm a huge fan of the mech, but I'll try to keep that from influencing the review. Also, for those of you not a part of the Clan Invasion Kickstarter, Brent announced that their second miniature is the Black Knight Clan Buster variant, with some alternate reposing options that you can see renders up here. The Stormcrow model is composed of six pieces, plus the two options for the alternate arms. Beginning with the torso and hip section, you can see mine had a little air bubble at the back that I had to fill with some putty and that's why it looks the way it does. The slipping that I'm talking about is clearly apparent on the left and right side. On the underside it's really clever that they've got this dimple and relief area so you can align the torso perfectly or it's got a little bit of wiggle room, maybe about 10 degrees, and if you want more you could just remove the dimple and glue it flat. The hip also aligns to these keyed shapes. One side's a hexagon, the other's a pentagon, so you can't get the legs wrong. It really helps out to make the model just poseable ready. The legs themselves definitely have some of the, of the worst casting lines and flash, but it's easily removed with a hobby knife or the back of a hobby blade, or even a scraping tool, or even sanding sticks. The plastic is uh, softer than the production version of the box sets. It's definitely easier to carve away. You do need to be careful because it is soft enough to where if you are using an aggressive sanding stick that you might gouge and or cause the surface to become coarse or grooved. I had that issue with the first model I did and had to kind of fill some of it in here and there but I still missed quite a bit of it. I was a little overly aggressive. Now this composition may change a little bit with the actual production, but the plastic overall was easy to work with, easy to clean up. I just got a little bit too heavy on the grit and then didn't notice it until afterwards. Cleaning the model up would be the same as maybe working with resin if you've worked with those before. You're going to sand things down, you're going to fill things in, you're going to carve away the flash or any areas that need a little bit more definition. And these models are no different in that regard the little nubs and things like that that made it through the casting process or that maybe you just want to have a little bit deeper like this line between the two armor plates that I'm reinforcing the groove on are fairly straightforward to get to carve away and make look a lot better. I did use a brash brush from time to time just to move the light and I guess press mold flash out of the way not the actual like casting lines themselves. Uh, I would be cautious with doing this too much as, again, I think I might have been a little bit too aggressive. I don't think the brass brush caused the issues. I think it was the, the, heavy, the lower grit sandpaper that I used. But just be in mind that it could cause some issues if you get a little bit too rough with it. Also, using a brass brush on these plastics, you're, you're running the risk of maybe breaking a miniature if you're holding it in one section and you run the brass bristles over a say the upper leg or something like that. So be careful if you do decide to do that. As you can see, I'm scraping away with the actual sharp side of the blade. This is an older hobby blade, just keep in mind, but please be careful. There were a couple times where I was going towards myself. Don't do that. I shouldn't have been doing that while I was filming, but anyway, the blade itself doesn't need to be extremely sharp. Uh, it might help in certain areas, but 
as you can see, I'm just using it as a scraping tool to remove the raised areas and everything pretty much went as I expected. There was nothing really odd or out of place with this material that I would say is worth bringing up. If you need to repose it or reshape it using hot water, this material responds the exact same way as a resin or any of the production catalyst plastic mechs do. So be mindful of that, that you have that option if things are maybe out of alignment or you want to change things. You can see once you get the legs onto the ball sockets on the hip, they have a little bit of a cant outward, but I like the way that this looks. It makes it much more dynamic and you have a little bit of play that you can use to go adjust maybe where the feet are. And like I said, using hot water, or even if you want to remove those keyways and adjust the legs more so you have that option. They did the same thing on the shoulder joints, which is a huge improvement over the regular plastic Ryokan, just because those arms look like they're squished on and they're, they're perfectly straightforward. Whereas these have the keyway on the inside of each socket and it provides a slight bit of outward cant and a little bit of adjustability movement wise so that you can just tweak that pose however you'd really like it to be. Of course you could do more or you could change things if you'd like, but it's nice to see something a little bit more natural looking and, and dynamic than the catalyst version, which just has the rigid straight arms. I haven't used any glue, I was able to stick this all together. Of course, it's you know, gonna be easily disassembled there, but uh, it's nice to see the fitment for the most part is pretty good out of the out of the mold. Now this is the one that I painted. Missed a few things here and there as far as the cleanup was concerned, but overall I'm really very happy with the way this model turned out. I like the overall fit and finish of the parts and the sharpness of the details, the added elements to the shoulders, and some of the crispness on the lines and depth really shows a lot more on these new plastic alternate variants. You do get the torso issues straightened out and what I mean by that is the new plastic alternate variant has a much more straight and aligned torso. The plastic one for some reason if you look at it from behind has a weird like almost maybe squished look and I didn't really notice that until I started to compare these two together and found how much more correct the plastic cast version from Creative Juggernaut was compared to the Catalyst plastic. The other option too is since you get these extra arms or you could order extra arms hopefully from them is that you can swap them out with your plastic version to make the alternate variant. Well, good luck taking those arms off. I've soaked them in simple green for two weeks, didn't loosen the glue. You're pretty much resorting to prying them off and probably breaking the plastic somewhere or you should really just probably heat them up and then cut it off right behind the socket there so that you can put the arm on and basically have it in the same relative position. I know it's not ideal, but if you have some of these extra arms because you ordered some of these eventually from, from Brent and Blaine, you'll have extra arms to add to your own plastic mechs and maybe you'll want to make those alternate variants. Looking at the photographs, you can see the comparison of the torsos here. You get sharper, crisper lines with the new cast plastic version. Of course, the casting lines are the detriment right now. Hopefully those things will be much more refined in the production model. You can also see here on the comparison of the back sides of the torsos where the CGL plastic torso has a left kind of leaning squashed look to it, whereas the Creative Juggernaut version does not. And that's what I was getting to earlier. For the alternate arm weapons, you can see there's some added detail on the crest of the shoulders. I thought that was a nice touch compared to the CGL model. You do lose a little detail on the outer side where the recessed circular inset is. And if you look at the plastic model, you'll know what I'm talking about, but I think it's not a huge deal. There was some flaws on the AC20 barrel and a little bit of slip as well as some lost like cavity on the bottom side as well. The Gauss rifle definitely had probably the better looking Quality, final quality of the two weapons, but again, these are you know, pre-production, test it out and see how you can get it. Overall, they cleaned up fairly well. It was a little longer and more involved than I would have liked, but I anticipated that. And as you could see from the finished model, it definitely turned out for the better. The right arm had a little bit more issues. There was some mold material left in the between the ER medium lasers on one. And then from the next one, you could see maybe that one came out first and then it had a little bubble of material left between the two right next to the hand. 
The underside also had some split as well as some slipping. And again, these are things that I've brought up to them so that they know about it. Uh, they're well aware and they are improving on the mold making process. All right, time for some final thoughts from a Battletech junkie. The fact that they're looking to produce these mechs that arrive unassembled with options for official variants with a likely option to purchase separate weapons bits has a massive fan appeal. Once these early issues are reined in, will they be perfect? No. Will they make every fan happy? Do I even need to ask these questions? But I wholeheartedly look forward to seeing what they're able to do and I value the option to purchase miniatures for a game I love with out of the box conversion options. At the time of this video, Creative Juggernaut's webpage is still being developed, but I've still included their website link in the description below. That's all for now. Over to you, Tex. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Check out our website at camospecs.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.